Welcome to News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss. Here now the news for October 26, 2020. Walt Disney World has announced a makeover of its classic entrances, which will be getting an all-new look for the resort's 50th anniversary. Concept art has been released for the entrances, which mark the removal of the Cinderella Castle cloud design and the banner uh, underneath, which said, Where Dreams Come True, which was added for the Year of a Million Dreams in 2006 and has remained there for the last 14 years. Uh, as well, the original color scheme that uh, has been a part of the sign since they were introduced in the 1990s uh, will be changing as well. This will affect all of those uh, signs of this style, not just the one you're seeing the R4 above or the one you're seeing now. Uh, so that'll affect World Drive, World Center Drive, Western Way, Osceola Parkway, and the Hotel Plaza Boulevard entrance, which has the bookend signs with no archway. You'll notice that the red lettering logo will now be replaced with a crisp white lettering and the iridescent rose gold flags, much like the colors we've now seen added to the Magic Kingdom Toll Plaza, uh, are there. From Disney, quote, starting today, these gateways to a Disney vacation are about to get some pixie dust as we begin to adorn them with a new color palette that complements the recent royal makeover of Cinderella Castle at the Magic Kingdom. The rendering gives you a first glimpse of what the entrances will look like when they're finished. In addition, you'll see these colors appear on the Magic Kingdom Park uh, Auto Plaza as we bring new shimmer to that iconic entryway. These refreshed gateways will continue to set the tone for all the stories you'll tell and the memories you'll cherish long after your visit. They're also part of the broad tapestry of new experiences happening across Walt Disney World as part of the resort's historic transformation that includes theme lands like Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and new attractions like Runaway Railway and new places to stay like Riviera Resort. You know, things that are purely white and not very themed. <laughs> uh, this looks good, though. This is needed to happen. I'm always going to be partial to the purple. I like the purple at the TTC. I like the purple on these signs. But I'm glad the stupid cloud castle's coming off. I'm happy about that, and I'm glad um, it's going to say most magical place on Earth rather than the where dreams come true thing, which they all had. Even Tokyo, every every resort around the world had that. So this is this is a nice update. I'm I'm very happy about that. Disney's Fairy Tale Weddings has just announced the return of weddings at Walt Disney World. Of course, new guidelines to keep guests and cast members safe include face covering requirements, physical distancing, and limited guest counts. And uh, from the Disney Fairy Tale Weddings Ever After blog, quote, we're honored to announce weddings have resumed as part of our phased reopening of Walt Disney World Resort. The Disney's Fairy Tale Weddings team has been working diligently with our health and safety team, looking at our experiences in detail so our couples and wedding guests can celebrate in a magical way. With health and safety in mind, we've implemented a combination of new measures that consider the guidance of local government and health officials. These measures include, again, face coverings, which will be required for all guests and members of the wedding party. During the ceremony, the couple may be able to remove their face coverings for a limited period of time while properly physical distancing. Uh, our events will also include measures to promote physical distancing among guests and cast members. Upcoming weddings will have limited guest counts, and we're working with our couples to find creative ways to set their ceremonies, receptions, and more. Pass holders can shop the new limited release Minnie Mouse, the main attraction Haunted Mansion collection at Sir Mickey's in the Magic Kingdom early on October 28th from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. before it's released to all guests while supplies last. The limited edition collection includes a Minnie Mouse ear headband, plush mug, pin set, and hip pack by Loungefly. All items eligible for pass holder merchandise discount currently 30% off through October 29th. While visiting the park, pass holders can also enjoy fall fun with special character cavalcades, beautiful merchandise, and delicious treats, which of course are lasting through Halloween. Disney has won in a pregnancy discrimination lawsuit from an ex-product designer for Disney streaming service who claimed he was harassed because of his wife's pregnancy. Stephen Van Soren sued DSS in November 2019 after working from Dis for Disney from August of 2016 through May of 2019. The, he alleged HR ignored his previous complaints about harassment and that he was terminated without cause after taking his two-week paternity leave. Among complaints, Van Soren claimed fellow employees had sprayed baby powder at him, brandished a knife at him, and made rude comments about the pregnancy. He, he was also worried about his computer being hacked, claiming that colleagues referenced things he had only discussed at home or viewed on his, phone, at, on his home computer. Disney filed a motion to dismiss the complaint in June, arguing, arguing that pregnancy discrimination laws only apply to a pregnant employee. U.S. District Judge Naomi Reese uh, Buckwald later ruled that Van Soren doesn't fall under a protected class, according to Title VII. 
Buckwald also cited that Van Soren was able to take his paternity leave without incident. Bonjour and behold, Imagineer Zach Ridley has shared a first look at the Remy's Ratatouille Adventure sign coming to the France Pavilion expansion at Epcot. In the image, we see gold foil being applied to the gilded elements of the marquee, which will be outfitted with 200 individual light bulbs. So far, many of the design elements for Remy's Ratatouille Adventure have matched that of the Disneyland Paris counterpart. Uh, however, this sign is slightly different with the gold leaf adding an unexpected opulence and Chef Remy in full view, unlike, again, the Parisian counterpart. Do note that Zach points out that the last finishing touches are being made to the exterior of the attraction, lending credence to the fact that nothing on the inside is done. So we still don't know when this thing's going to open. Who knows, but the, uh, the, the talk on the street is, is next year. The Lotus Blossom Cafe has reopened in the China Pavilion at Epcot with social distancing measures, which brings us one step closer to what we all want, the reopening of Nine Dragons. Give us, she fell over, give us Nine Dragons back. Uh, with the opening of Lotus Blossom Cafe, the extended Frozen Ever After queue has been moved. There are temporary green tape markers running down the other side of the path and around the corner for Frozen Ever After. The queue markers previously used for Frozen are now used for Lotus Blossom Cafe. One side of the entry archway is labeled entrance, while the other side is exit only. Once you enter, arrows point to either, uh, either of the available registers, and only one register was open when we swung by. There are arrows directing guests in and out for the uh, pickup aisles. There's also plexiglass protecting the cast members at the registers. Some seating is marked unavailable for social distancing, and of course chairs have been removed from the tables, um, so to tell you that they're not available. The Waffles booth at the Taste of Epcot International Food and Wine Festival has a new menu, so we had to try the new dishes. Previously, the menu had a Belgian waffle with warm chocolate ganache and a Belgian waffle with berry compote. The waffle with chocolate ganache remains, but there's now a Bananas Foster waffle and a Chicken and Waffles dish. To read our full review of these new, new items, head on over to www.nt.com. Plexiglass dividers have been added to the loading area of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway at Hollywood Studios. This could mean that plexiglass dividers will also be added to the train cars themselves, allowing multiple parties to sit in one train car. So imagine your party in the front, another party right behind you behind a plexiglass shield. This is similar to what's happening at Rise of the Resistance, where they're preparing to split those ride vehicles in half with plexiglass as well. On top of this, we went on over to Slinky Dog Dash in Toy Story Land. They have also, for this attraction, set up uh, these plexiglass dividers between every row. Now, obviously, I don't think because of the nature of a roller coaster, you can set up a plexiglass shield between each row, although I'd love to see that. Um, chances are you'll get something similar maybe to Kilimanjaro Safari, those plastic uh, dividers, but it does seem like they're looking at possibly seating every row on this attraction as well. Uh, we will keep checking as uh, developments happen at these two attractions, but this would be really interesting to see if, if they make these changes. See Minnie and her friends at delightful dining parties throughout the year, hosted inside Hollywood and Vine Restaurant at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Uh, the mouse with the mostest hosts sensational soirees that mix festive music, decor, and tantalizing menu items. And you can celebrate with popular Disney characters perfectly dressed for each season. This spectacular lunch and dinner offers shared starters along with the choice of individual plated entrees and desserts. Uh, of course, we just reviewed uh, the Halloween version of this, which was the first under the new protocols. Um, if you want to see what these meals will be like every season, you can visit our website. While friendship boats have been operating in the World Showcase Lagoon since Epcot reopened in July, they have not resumed service to nearby resort hotels. However, we do finally know that now they will resume service on November 1st. From the International Gateway, guests will be able to board a boat to Disney's Yacht and Beach Club Resort, Disney's Boardwalk Inn, the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin, and Disney's Hollywood Studios. Service will begin. Service to Epcot will begin 30 minutes before park opens. Service to Hollywood Studios will begin one hour before that park opens. Return service from both parks will be available for one hour after park close. Cast members, of course, have been seen training in these boats as of late. Two new baby animals were born in Animal Kingdom this month. First, the park welcomed a baby aardvark, which some people think is terrifying. I think it's adorable. The story of the baby's parents was told in the latest episode of The Magic of Disney's Animal Kingdom, Aardvark Love, which is a terrible name, but uh, this show is great, by the way. The episode follows aardvarks Willie and Peanut, who were set up on a blind date by the animal care team at Animal Kingdom as part of the species survival plan. Fortunately, their pair hit it off, and a few months later, Karanga was born at Rafiki's Planet Watch. 
Karenga is the first baby aardvark in her family and in the park's history. She named after her mother as Karenga means peanut in Swahili. The park's blog also shared photos of the newborn Karenga. Aardvarks are a sub-Saharan African uh, species. Their long snouts help them find and eat up to 50,000 insects in one night. It's me at a Disney buffet. Karenga was digging around in the dirt in search of ants within a few hours of her birth. She wasn't the only baby born this month, though. On October 20th, the Animal Kingdom welcomed a baby Maasai giraffe. According to Mark Penning, the calf was able to stand and start nursing quickly. She doesn't have a name yet, but she was born to Mom Willow. She weighed 160 pounds, was just over six feet tall at birth. She's bonding with her mom for now, but will join the herd on the savannah uh, very soon. On top of those babies, Disney was pleased to announce that Kendi, the rhino, gave birth to a baby boy rhino this week. Delivery is the first of three births expected at Animal Kingdom. The beautiful white rhino was up walking and nursing within an hour of birth. Yeah, <laughs> push, your, push your human babies along faster. Tell them, tell them how quick the rhino was up. His father, uh, Duggan, uh, must be a proud father. The successful birth is even more special when considering that white rhinos are an endangered species. Some of this calf's activities will be featured again in the Magic of Disney's Animal Kingdom series on Disney+. Plus. Be sure to keep an eye out for an episode featuring Kendi and her newborn. With Disneyland Resort theme parks still unable to reopen, it seems they are exploring alternatives. Now Disneyland has announced they will be reopening Disney California Adventure as a shopping and dining destination with locations along Buena Vista Street coming back for guests uh, for the first time in months. Beginning in November, there'll be even more distinctly Disney dining and shopping for you to enjoy at Disneyland Resort when Downtown Disney District extends to Buena Vista Street. With Buena Vista Street soon opening, select shopping and dining experience. You can find even more places to enjoy a memorable meal or a fun shopping excursion. Only the shopping and dining experiences across Buena Vista Street will be open, though, not the rest of the park, except for, you know, Stage 17, which opened to Downtown Disney guests a little while ago. Disney did clarify that there are no plans to do anything similar with Main Street USA at Disneyland Park at this time. The main gates of California Adventure will remain closed, and guests will enter near the La Brea Bakery, uh, which is what they did when they were building Buena Vista Street, funny enough. For now, there's no specific date for this reopening. It only seems it'll be sometime in November of 2020. Uh, this will be the first time a section of the park was reopened since, of course, the closing of Disney California Adventure back in March. Animal and nature lovers alike will adore this new Forest Friends collection at Walt Disney World featuring animals from the Fox and the Hound, Pocahontas, Cinderella, and more. The collection features a new spirit jersey, leggings, and a lounge fly bag. You can check out the full collection on our website. Celebrate the classics with these all-new vinyl partner statue and Mr. Toad figurines coming to a special shopping event at the downtown Disney District at Disneyland. To purchase them, you must make a shopping reservation. To view uh, more details on this, you can also head to WDWNT.com. For those of you who love denim, your wish is Mouse Gears Command. You can now add a Walt Disney World denim spirit jersey to your wardrobe. The garment appeared at Mouse Gear during a recent visit to Epcot. The front of the spirit jersey includes a drawstring to tighten the hood. It has a hood, unlike most spirit jerseys. This Walt Disney World denim spirit jersey retails for $79.99 and again was found at Epcot. The holidays have begun to arrive at Walt Disney World. In fact, the entire holiday and Christmas merchandise collection is now at Walt Disney World. We found everything at BVG, that's Bayview Gifts is what that's short for, at Disney's Contemporary Resort. That was the second location to roll out the holiday merchandise. A limited selection, of course, came earlier uh, this month at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. On Monday, the collection will roll out in full to the Emporium at the Magic Kingdom, as well as the World of Disney at Disney Springs. Uh, if you want to check out all of these items, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them, by the way. You have to head to WDWNT.com. I will tell you, though, I was there this morning at BVG, and I picked up some of these items. These went quick. These are scented gingerbread plush. They smell like gingerbread. I think they smell like gingerbread. There was an argument in the office that they smelled like vanilla. I think they smell like gingerbread. They're super cute. These sold out real fast. You may not see these at BVG, but they'll be around. They'll come back. These are great. I also picked up this. Uh, I'm going to scroll off screen here for a moment. This really cool wooden Christmas tree with park icons on it. You wind it up. I'm going to wind it up here. There you go. It plays Oh Christmas Tree. Isn't that cute? No, we got Halloween and Christmas on the desk 
right now. What a mess. Anyway, for more information on these stories and more, head on over to WDWNT.com. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, the Vacationeer, the engineers of your next magical vacation. Sit back and let their team of vacation planning experts craft your family's next magical Disney trip. The best part, their services are free. Visit WDWNT.travel for details. The Vacationeer, the official travel agency of WDWNT. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to like this video, subscribe to WDW News Today on YouTube for more great content, and click the bell for notifications. Also, make sure to select all notifications so you never miss an episode of the show. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying enjoy the rest of your today, and have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. And now I'm going to go back to, to sniffing these. It smells really good. Looking for the latest in Disney news on the go? Then download WDWNT the app. From news to videos to park hours and more, WDWNT the app is your one-stop shop for the latest from the Disney world. Available on iPhone and Android, just search for WDWNT in your device's app store.